Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate. I am from the Kate's Crafting Nest and today we are still going to be working on the Tulip Pink Butterfly Quilt. I am going to be um, doing the first block in the book and that's section one and it's from this this book right here. So make sure you have your pattern. Um, I happen to have the pattern and the kit and um, I think I mentioned it before that I was going to be um, using everything in this um, in this book and I was going to sew it exactly the same. Well, update. I think I'm going to still keep with the same color as far as the wings, but I'm thinking about changing this green out right here, the, the, the background colors. I think I'm going to use the, um, the true color polka dot with the white background and the, the dot part of it. It's like light pink. I've already ordered that. It's just not here yet since we're not, I'm not going to be using that right this minute. It sh whenever it gets here, I will share it. I did order enough. I think I ordered four yards just to be safe because I'm going to um, starch. So I just want to get it out of the way. So a little update. In the book, I'm going to be working on part one and the, the block is right here, right here. So the way she has it written is um, like one block at a, at a time, but you're going to need to do two blocks um, at a time because one block per each wing. So right here is one, and then she only has it written as one. I went on ahead and cut um, both, both wings together at the same time because if I'm gonna need, for example, I don't know, one inch for one, I'm just gonna go cut two of the same thing. That's what I did. So I just, to make it easier and faster. So that's what I did. Um, and this is my, I've already cut the pieces out. So this is what it looks like. I've cut my pieces out and I have labeled them. This is the, this is how I've chosen to kind of make it more organized for me. I have labeled it as one, two, three, four. And this piece right here goes horizontal on the block. So what I'm gonna do is going ahead and sew number one to this right here. And then number two to number three right here. And then number four. So this right here is two blocks. So I've doubled what she asked for in the book. I'm not sure, I hope I'm making sense. So she has it written as one block at a time. You need two. So I went ahead and cut both at the same time. So I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to sew number one to number two. Right now I'm just chain piecing all the pieces together. It's easier that way. And then I'll go ahead and I will iron all at the same time. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm trying to make it as efficient for myself as I can. Cause my least favorite part of quilting is ironing or pressing because I'm sure everybody has their favorite and everybody have their least favorite. Um, and I have the, I'm using the seam guide tape. This tape is awesome. I don't have to think 
um, the red part is smack down the middle right here and then this is your quarter inch and this is my quarter inch on the other side so and if you're wondering what kind of sewing machine I'm using right now it is the Janome M7 uh, machine so I am going to finger press actually you know what I'm going to iron this or I'm going to press this in. and I've taken the other piece that will go on the side right here and that is what I'm going to do and just join it to this piece make sure it's yep, right size and so, so, so. Oh, and if you're wondering too, um, I have pre-starched my fabric ahead of time. I use the Faultless Niagara Fall. It helps me with more accuracy. And... There are quilters out there that does not, um, that don't starch, they don't use steam. Now, I do starch, I do not use steam at all. And I'll tell you why. I used to use steam and I used to, and it would stretch out my fabric. Maybe it's because I don't know what I was doing or I still don't know what I'm doing because I'm not perfect. And I'm still learning every day. So, and then I switch to not using steam when I press my, my blocks and I have better results. So, I have, I have not been using, using steam when I press, but I uh, pre-starch my, my fabric. And you can kind of see how stiff it is on camera. I mean, I don't know if the camera is doing any justice right now, but it's pretty stiff. So I'm gonna pull it out. See, it's taking shape. I have here the first block, almost done. So I'm gonna assemble it. These are my Afrobeady that I'm using. We're done with one and two. So I'm gonna assemble this on the design, on the portable design little board that I have. And I'll show you what I have here on how she wants it to look. So this is what I have right here. Right here, this is facing that way. This is facing that way, and this is facing this way. Oh. So what I'm doing is, so this part right here is done. I've connected piece number one to piece number two. So all together, these are three pieces. So next, we're going to join this guy with this guy, and this guy here. So they're going to look like this. That's what we're doing next. So I'm gonna chain piece this to this and put this right back there, okay? Here we go, chain piece in again. All right. that I've sewn I'm facing them the same direction so I don't mess up so I don't accidentally sew one section to the other part and it'll be looking wonky when I'm done so, 
everything is facing the same direction so I can make things easier for myself. And as a quilter, that's kind of, I mean, it's a hobby, enjoy it. I mean, nobody's coming in your sewing room watching how you do things. I'm just sharing how I do things. Maybe it will help somebody out there without, you know, don't stress about it. being said this requires a lot of pressing I feel like whenever I finger press it and just kind of like run over it with a little pressing with the um, iron it makes it a little bit more flat so everything is still facing the same way I've ironed that piece now we're gonna sew this piece we're gonna sew this piece right here this, we're gonna sew this piece right here to this piece so this is piece number one number two, number three. So number three is being cut uh, twice, two different sizes. This is a smaller size, this is the bigger size. So I'm gonna sew these piece here now and I'm gonna face them all the same way so I don't mess it up. And here we go. I use both my fingers to hold it down so it doesn't go anywhere. to make it faster and easier because if you cut one block at a time and you need to make two of the same thing, why chasing your tail in the cup when you don't have to? Last bit. I'm doing two for the killing two birds with one stone. Progress, progress, progress. All right, so you can see it's looking like a pattern. So all of the pieces are done. So this is piece number one, number two, Number three. This is the only one in the block that's just one size. This is uh, these right here are cut to different sizes. The same pat, the same fabric, two different sizes. This one, the same, two different, uh, two different sizes as well. So what I'm gonna do now is try to um, assemble it um, the way it's supposed to be. So this one. It's going to, this part's gonna face this way. This part's gonna face this way. This part's going to also face this way. This is going to face this way, right? This right here is four more. That is for the other, the other um, block. But I'm gonna do it one at a time. So I'm gonna put piece number four like this and then like that so again one two three four this is the fifth the fifth one that i was talking about earlier that's gonna go vertical like that so it's looking like a block it's looking like it's coming together i guess i do know what i'm doing after all so i'm gonna sew this piece this to this to this and I'm gonna come back to this side. I'm gonna sew this to this right here to this one, and I'm gonna join it with this. So when I sew this 
unit together, then I will go on ahead and sew both sides to the middle part. Okay, that's what we're doing. All right, we are in business. At least I think we're in business. Like I said earlier, I pin when I have to, and now I have to. So I need to make sure I have my pieces together here. And I'm gonna do this in the middle. It's kind of like, I don't know. And then I don't sew over my pins. So I'm not trying to mess my machine up because if you sew over your pen and you accidentally, because this is all, it's not mechanical, it's computerized and something goes bad in there, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna, you know, hard to get parts and things. I'm not trying to take that chance. This is the unit. I would just did. You see that? One, two, three, four. And then right here is one, two, three, four. So, but each section have you cut four pieces of each one so you ended up cutting four of this four of this four of this that's where you have to cut the same fabric twice in two different sizes so but it only has you cutting it once so i'm just cutting everything at the same time like if it says cut four of this i'm cutting eight because i'm making two blocks at the same time i hope i'm making sense so I just want to refer to that really quickly so that way I also check myself to make sure I'm doing it right. So I'm gonna join this right here together. finger pressing to train the fabric to go one certain direction. So when I'm putting it together, my seams are lined up. So what I'm gonna do now is go and press this too, right here. I'm gonna press them. All right. So this is where is a little bit easy, um, easy to get confused. So, um, I'm going to just sew this part to this part, press, and then come back and sew this part to right here and press, and then I'll be done with this block. So let's do this first. Take my pen down. to press now with this part I'm going to bring this here make sure now this right here has to line up I'm gonna make sure I line these part up so it doesn't look wonky um, at the end when I'm all done 
So I will pin right in that middle part right there. I want you to see how this is right here. This right here is lined up. This right here is lined up as much as I can have it. And then I will pin and I will pin right in the middle right there. So it doesn't move while I'm sewing. And then I'll pin right there, right before my seam. So that way it doesn't move. And I'll pin at the end. Because I mean this is this quilt is not going to a show, but at the same time, I want to do justice and do a good job as good a job as I know how doing it. Um, and if I make a mistake, I will have to go out on a date with Mr. Jack and rip it and see. But for the most part, I'm trying to do it right from the beginning. what it looks like right now in all his glory so what I'm gonna do is press it and we'll see what the first one looks like now I'm putting my fabric on the bed of this of this sewing machine uh, this is the Janome M7 I think I mentioned it at the beginning the extender part of it is I kid you not this is a 10 and a half inch block and it fits the entire thing. And then there's some left over. So I am able to like kind of put this here so I can kind of see what it's gonna look like. And it has measurement from like literally one inches to 21 on this. Um, it's, it's a really nice machine. And I also use this to do my free motion quilting as well. Uh, I'm not the best at it, but they say you're your own worst critics, but I have to agree with that because when I do my quilts and I give it out and as a gift, and every, you know, it's like, wow, how did you do that? And it's like, oh my God, you wouldn't believe what, how many mistakes I have in it. But at the end of the day, it is it's handmade and homemade so it's not meant to be perfect. I am by all means not a perfect quilter, but I do my best to make it nice. If something looks really jacked up, I will rip it out and I'll do it. But if it's like eh, a little bit, I will let it slide. I'm just putting that out there so you guys don't come for me. <laughs> when I do something wrong <laughs> and you're like no just screaming at me like don't do it that way to go this way I'm gonna press I'll be right back now I'm going to connect this part to this part and I want to make sure oh I messed up see <laughs> it's supposed to be all this right here it's supposed to be pointing that way and I just kind of did it that way and I thankfully caught myself 
because I do not want to have a date Mr. with Mr. Jack. So, like I did with the first one, I'm going to make sure this guy's lines up like that. So, and that's the first part I'm going to pin. Pin. And pin. And then pin again at the beginning. So as the machine sew the fabric with the with the bobbin thread and the top thread pulling, sometimes it pulls the the fabric and then it if it's not pinned or if you're not paint, being careful and lining them up it will kind of shift your alignment on the fabric so that's why i'm taking the extra time to pin to pin it and make sure these section right here lines up otherwise i'm not that much of a pinner most of the time Ladies and gentlemen, this is done. This is what I'm talking about. I'm going to press it and I'll be right back. And I will um, I will trim it to make sure I got the right size. All right. I am all done. This is the first one. This is the second one, right? So, this is my block, right here. This is two of them, all done. That was quick. So, this is the one, the first one, the second one, and I did them both. I cut both my fabrics for the, uh, both blocks at the same time. Sew them together, chain piece it, done. And so now I'm going to try to trim it to make sure that I got um, the right size. Just trim it on the, make, make sure it looks neat and then clean and hope that it's 10 and a half. Okay, I'm going to square my blocks up to make sure they are they are looking pretty good so far. It's not so bad. Okay, I'm gonna trim, trim. Not that bad. Take these pieces and I have trash back there, flip it this way. And Ten and a half. Oop. I think this is the side that I cut. All right, ten and a half. Yep, I was right. I'm glad I double check before I cut. Boom. Not that bad. All right, and then I'm gonna do the second one. I'm gonna go this way. This is going to be, uh, 
So my corner right here is lined up with that corner before I trim. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, this is not much here, but there's more here, not so bad. And I just say that I need a new rotary, rotary blade. This is the endurance blade by Ulfa. And I'm gonna flip it. And I'm going to trim. Trim. Okay, it's apparent. I need to change my blade. Okay. Finish with my blocks and you are going to make two of this. This is one. And this is two. Not so bad, huh? Not too bad for my first block. So you guys are gonna make two of these in the colorways that she is suggesting in the book. If you want to, you could change it up. You can make it your own, but I'm doing this according to the, um, to the fabric. And like I said earlier, the only thing I'm changing is the background. And when that time come, I will share as well. Um, go make your blocks and have two of each. You will make 10 all together in different colorways. Alrighty. Thank you so much. If you like what you see, please share, like, and subscribe. And tell all your friends that we are sewing the Tulip Pink Butterfly Quilt together. Y'all have a great day. And I will catch you later. Bye.